Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In your dissection of the nasal cavity in the lateral nasal wall and nasal pharynx, you are actually working in an area which is quite shallow and so that most of your identification is going to be surface identification and working in the mucous membrane covering surfaces which are bony in this area. The first aspect that you will be considering this dissection is the nasal septum which is obviously included on only one side of the head. Now in this case prior to reflecting the mucosa which we ask you to do you should find in the cut surface of the palate anteriorly the region of the incisive canal. Now on this particular specimen we can see it right in this region and if you remember then that the nerve supply and blood supply passing to the palate pass along the septum. They are going to pass then upward along that septum in this region and should be located then either in the mucous membrane by attaching it, uh, approaching it from this direction or you can reflect the mucous membrane just keeping in mind that you want to look for the nerve and blood supply in this region and that's what I would like to do in this particular case. If we peel back the periosteum in this area and look on its surface we can see then aspects of the nasopalatine nerve for example here and in this area there is a cut surface then of a vessel. This is a septal branch then of the sphenopalatine artery which will also pass through the nasal or the incisive canal. The mucous membrane can be removed and laid to the side and we can identify then features of the septum its bony features and cartilaginous ones. Once you have done that, you can reflect the septum and save it for later review. And as you remove it then, expose the lateral nasal wall. Here is the lateral nasal wall and we can see some of its features that you should be identifying. Again, because these are surface features, uh, most of these can be done very well by the student and I will not review at that time. There are some critical relationships, however, we should consider. This is our middle conch. The arterial supply to the lateral nasal wall and in fact penetrating and passing over to the septum passes through the sphenopalatine foramen. That foramen is located just posterior and superior to the middle conch and that would be in this region. Now on the next specimen I will show you in fact some fragments of that arterial supply. The anterior supply are branches then of the ethmoidal artery. The facial artery will pass up into this region to supply it. But here for comparison purposes we have the opposite side of the head um, and in this case we have removed the conchi and I'll try to show you what we have here. Realize this is the opposite side so that this is the anterior nasal aperture here, anterior nasal aperture here. Um, the remains then of the cut edge of in fact the inferior conch are here. A good way to identify that is a feature that you see coming into this area and you can see its cut edge at this point, the nasal lacrimal duct. Now above that then we have also removed in this region the middle conch and I'll just remind you that the middle conch is this section which we wanted to identify and that has been cut. Its cut surface is here and its posterior edge and we'll look at this now in detail is represented in this region. Here we can see an artery which passes out. In fact, the sphenopalatine artery in this case comes through two foramina instead of through a single sphenopalatine foramina. The traditional foramen 
in this individual was located here. And you can see arterial supply passing out of it, which has been cut off. Um, beneath then the attachment, bony attachment of the middle conch occurred another major arterial passageway through the lateral nasal wall. Uh, these would be posterior superior lateral nasal vessels of the sphenopalatine artery. Now in dissecting the medial wall of the maxillary sinus, which is going to be the last portion of your view of this region, we should identify a few other features. Here, for example, is a cut section of the palate. If we remind you that at this point the greater palatine nerve comes into the palate, we can pass up and realize then that the pterygopalatine canal passes down here. And the pterygopalatine canal houses neurologic features that we'll want to look at in the dissection of the maxillary nerve. So that in this region, we're going to break away then the medial wall of the maxillary sinus. The foramen or ostium of the maxillary sinus is located in a semilunar slit located here, and the opening to it is at this point. You will also notice a supplemental opening, not too uncommon in this region, which also passes into the maxillary sinus. The frontal sinus also passes into this hiatus and acts as a means of identifying, in fact, that you are in the hiatus. And we can see the tip of it in the frontal sinus here. Now I would like to then have you remove this lateral portion of the nasal fossa and we want to stay anterior to the canal contents and yet posterior to the nasal lacrimal duct. We'll begin that sharply because the bone of this region is in fact very thin and in many cases is reduced merely to mucous membrane. We have now then completed the removal of the lateral nasal wall or if you want to consider it the medial wall of the maxillary sinus. Let me go over the boundaries here for you just to show you that we've kept the landmarks. Here then was our nasal lacrimal duct. Here is the hard palate, the floor then of the nasal cavity. The contents of the pterygopalatine canal pass forward in this region. And then what we have done is to remove the bone in this region. Now this individual is an edentulous individual, so that some features of the sinus are changed over that that you would find in an individual with a full alveolar bone. However, we can see, if we look inside here, the extreme extent of this sinus. Anteriorly, which is the wall we're looking at in this region, we can see a septum, for example, extending down in this area here. When we consider the dissection of the maxillary nerve, we'll actually approach the sinus again and identify features which lie deep to its mucous membrane and, in fact, deep to this septum that we see in this region. You should notice, especially in those individuals which have teeth, the relationship of the maxillary sinus to those teeth and the roots as they project in this region. The apices frequently are covered only by the membrane of this sinus. After considering the maxillary sinus, the final features of today's dissection are those of the nasal pharynx. The nasal pharynx then extends from the posterior nasal aperture, which is here, back to the posterior pharyngeal wall in this region. One of the prominent features I should remind you that in this case we have removed the mucous membrane over this area, is in fact the auditory tube which passes into the nasopharynx in this region. Extending around it then is a donut shaped area which is the torus tuberius and coming out from underneath it a muscular mass which is normally covered by mucous membrane, the levator villi palatini muscle. I have asked you to remove the membrane over a muscle which extends down from the auditory tube 
is called the salpingal pharyngeus muscle, and that muscle is demonstrated here. These are the very few features then of the nasopharynx that you'll want to look at. There are others that are well outlined in the guide and should be located. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.